We now start a series of videos in which we study emission spectroscopies. The, type of, uh, the first type of emission spectroscopy that we will uh, investigate is fluorescence. Okay, to stu study fluorescence, we uh, depart from uh, UVB absorption, which is what we have studied in prior videos. What we have here is uh, uh, a diagram that introduces the concept of coupled uh, electronic with vibrational excitations. Okay, where you have here two electronic states, and they have uh, uh, vibrational states inside those electronic states. And then with the frank condom principle, what we have done is studied what controls the intensity of the transition from a particular vibrational state in the ground electronic state uh, to a particular vibrational state in the uh, excited electronic state. Okay, so uh, uh, this is where we start. In emission spectroscopy, uh, uh, what fluorescence is, is essentially uh, one of the ways that the system has to return from the excited state, electronic, to the ground state electronic. That's, that's uh, again, fluorescence is one of the ways uh, for molecules to relax the electronic excitation. Right, to I'm going to simplify a little bit this diagram by removing these uh, uh, potential energy cores for the diatomics. Uh, and yes, that should facilitate a little bit of discussion. Okay, I'm still going to uh, draw here electronic states with vibrational states on them. Okay, so again, that would be uh, this is the electronic state, ground state. And this will be your uh, V0, and this is your V1, this is V2, and so forth. I'm going to draw one more, V3. And then you'll have your excited electronic state, E1. But here you will have uh, V0, V1, V2, and so forth. Again, uh, in absorption spectroscopy, uh, 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 from the frank, uh, frank condom principle, we can actually, again, uh, uh, detect what are the uh, wavelengths of the photons that are needed to excite the system from, again, a particular uh, vibrational and electronic state to a particular electronic and vibrational state. And again, now what we actually have is the system in the excited state. So let's assume for the sake of the discussion that the system uh, uh, ends up being in this V3. This is where our system is after absorbing a UVB photon. Again, and now we ask the question, how does the system return to the ground state? Okay, there's actually various ways for uh, the energy you have uh, right here uh, to uh, uh, be returned or, or be uh, removed and you are uh, to fall to the ground state. Okay, so uh, uh, for example, one of the ways that molecules can do this is by losing that energy as uh, to the solvent, right? So if, you are, if you're in solution, you have a molecule that is excited electronically, that energy might be uh, deposited into solvent through collisions, and what en that ends up doing is, is that energy is lost as thermal motion uh, to, the, to the solvent. Okay, so the solution will become instantaneously a little bit hotter, and eventually that energy will be diffused uh, away from the molecule. Okay, so that is a pretty common way to lose energy. Now, uh, another way that, that, that uh, the system might lose the excited state is because, well, the molecules tend to be more reactive when they're in, in an electronic excited state, and it's possible that the molecule will react or even, uh, even dissociate in some cases. Okay? Uh, so both of those mechanisms for loss of energy, uh, uh, the collisions with the solvent and the reaction, that is what we call non-radiative processes. Okay? There's no photons involved in uh, losing the energy. However, what we're interested in is uh, mechanisms to return to the ground state that do involve photons, okay? And those are called radiative uh, processes. Okay, so fluorescence is a type of radiative process uh, 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 for a system to return from an excited electronic state to a ground electronic state. All right, so let's try to examine what happens here. Again, our system is going to be uh, in this uh, particular vibrational, vibrational state of the excited electronic state. The first thing that happens is that vibrational relaxation in the excited state takes place. Okay, so again, we have that the molecule is both uh, electronically excited, okay, so it has one electron in a high energy orbital, okay, and it's also vibrationally excited, right? So it turns out that the vibrational relaxation, right, so the return of this vibrationally excited molecule to the ground vibrational uh, uh, state is actually much faster than the electronic relaxation. Okay, so the first thing that will happen is that this molecule will actually lose vibrational excitation, it will go from V3 to V2 to V1 to V0, and this happens really, really fast. We call that process vibrational relaxation. Okay, then uh, after vibrational relaxation, which is pretty fast, 
the uh, system finds itself in the ground vibrational state of the excited elect electronic state. Notice that in this case, vibrational relaxation can no longer take, take place because you're already at the lowest possible quantum state of vibration. Okay, so then after that, the only way to lose energy in a radiative manner is for you to hop back to the ground state emitting a photon that then you can detect. Okay, that's actually what we call fluorescence. Okay? All right, so uh, the, the, again, the idea is that you're going to be here in the ground uh, vibrational state of the excited electronic state and there's uh, various transitions that you can experience, okay? And much as when, uh, uh, when in absorption, we actually had that the system can transition from V0 to V0 or V0 to V1, V0 to V2, V3, uh, when you actually uh, return to the, to the ground state, okay, you can also experience various transitions. Okay, so one of them would be uh, for you to come from V0 to V0, okay, emitting a photon, this is uh, H nu, Okay, but uh, you could also return from V0 to V1, okay, from V0 to V2, or V0 to V3, okay, and you could emit a photon for each one of them, okay? Now, uh, the possibility of each one of these transitions is also controlled by the overlap of the wave function of this vibrational state with the respective wave functions to the vibrational states in the ground electronic state. And again, that is controlled by something similar to the Frank condom principle. But in the end, what happens here is that when you take a look at then at the emission spectrum, right? So when you try to record the photons that have been emitted uh, uh, in the decay of this uh, excited state, what you're actually going to have is a collection of peaks corresponding to individual uh, vibrational transitions, okay, within uh, the decay of electronic states. Okay, and again, the intensities of each one of those are going to be, uh, uh, that's going to be controlled by the frank condom principle. Right, so let's try to see if we can now look at uh, uh, spectrum and see if we can actually see where these peaks uh, uh, that correspond to a fluorescent process would be. Right, so again, this is what we have in absorption. That's what we came uh, from the prior video. From the frank condom principle, these are peaks that correspond to the transition from the low energy state uh, electronic to the high energy state electronic. And again, now we're going to try to place here, okay, where the energy uh, of the fluorescent transitions would be. All right, so let's take a, take a look at the higher energy one. Okay, so this is uh, the higher energy photon that you can get from uh, a fluorescent process. Okay, from the ground vibrational state to the ground vibrational state in different electronic states. Okay, so it turns out that the energy of the photon that you get right here, or the wavelength of the photon, is actually going to be coincident with the energy or the wavelength of the photon that you need to uh, produce this transition, which is the zero to zero, and that is what we have right here. Okay, so those peaks actually overlap in the absorption and fluorescence spectrum. However, the rest of the peaks will not overlap. Okay, if we actually uh, take a look at the uh, other possible transition that you have right here, from V0 in the excited state to V1 in the ground, uh, in the ground electronic state, Okay, notice that this energy is actually a little bit smaller than this energy. Okay? And what that means is that the wavelength of the photon that is emitted, the fluorescent photon that is emitted, okay, is going to be a little bit longer, okay, lower energy, than the V0, V0. Okay, so if you have a longer wavelength, well, what will happen is that your fluorescence is actually going to be right here. This is when you go from the 1 to the 0 in fluorescence. Okay, and then you will see that from V0 to V2, you will have a little bit of a longer, ener longer energy, longer wavelength, lower energy because uh, this energy gap is increasingly smaller, and so forth. Okay, so the peaks will appear towards that region of the spectrum. Okay, so that will be your uh, 2 to 0, and then you will have a 3 to 0, and then you will have a 4 to 0, and so forth. Okay, so this will be fluorescence. So it's interesting to compare uh, the fluorescence spectrum with the absorption spectrum. Notice that the transition uh, involves the same type of levels, but it's always the case that fluorescence is shifted towards longer wavelengths or uh, lower energies than the peaks that you have in absorption. And again, the reason can be actually found out by simply looking at this diagram. Notice that absorption, the lowest possible transition that you can have is the V0 to V0. That is the uh, lowest possible. You can, all, you can have this one, which is high in energy, this one, which is high in energy, that one, which is high in energy, 
And again, all those transitions are actually going to go from here to the left. Shorter wavelengths, higher energies. Okay, in fluorescence, okay, you're going to have that this is the largest possible energy gap that you're going to bridge. Okay, any other transition is actually going to be a lower energy, longer wavelength. Okay, so again, this is your uh, uh, highest possible energy peak, shortest wavelength, okay, and all of the other transitions are actually going to be uh, longer wavelength and lower energy. Okay, so you see this split in the absorption of fluorescence uh, peaks where fluorescence always occur at uh, uh, lower energies, longer wavelengths. Okay, and again, the, the reason for that is that uh, in going from the absorption to fluorescence, you're losing some energy through this vibrational relaxation uh, process. Okay, in the best possible, in the best case scenario, where there's no vibrational relaxation, then the absorption photon V0 to V0 is exactly identical to uh, the V0 to V0 fluorescent photon. But in any other transition where you actually uh, end up with absorption in a high vibrational excited state, then this loss of energy through vibrational relaxation is going to mean that the energy of the photon that you actually are getting is going to be smaller uh, than the energy of the photon that you absorbed to get there. Okay, so uh, uh, fluorescence can be uh, uh, naturally studied because usually what happens is that in, in many fluorescent molecules, okay, uh, the photons that you actually need to excite the, uh, the molecule to the excited state, here are going to be in the UV range, okay, so not visible to us. But this loss of energy through vibrational relaxation and then uh, the transitions to uh, excited vibrational states in the ground electronic state, those are going to be of lower energy than UVs and they can be in the visible. Okay, so a typical experiment would be to shine UV light on a fluorescent molecule and then see the visible photons that come from the fluorescence uh, process. Okay, so again, this is uh, uh, a study of what uh, uh, the fundamentals of fluorescence. In the next video, we'll study a, a different emission process, uh, which is called phosphorescence.